Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, June 25th, and we are here in our beautiful new sanctuary. And let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of our for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God the Almighty. Walk in my presence and be blameless. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you that you must keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. God further said to Abraham, as for your wife, Sarah, do not call her Sarai. We, her name shall be Sarah. When you look at this, the spelling is S-A-R-A-I, and her new name is S-A-R-A-H. Her new name shall be Sarah. I will bless her, and I will give you a son by her. Him also will I bless. He shall give rise to nations, and rulers of people shall issue from him. Abraham prostrated himself and laughed as he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or can Sarah give birth at ninety? Then Abraham said to God, Let both Ishmael live on by your favor. God replied, Nevertheless, nevertheless, your wife Sarah is to bear you a son, and you shall call him Isaac. I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting pact, to be his God and the God of his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of twelve chieftains, and I will make of him a great nation. But my covenant I will maintain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with him, God departed from Abraham. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, see how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, for you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm fascinated today with, with this idea of the leper because are we not the COVID-19 sufferers, the new lepers of the 21st century? Um, really quite interesting. The other reading that I'm going to point out kind of as an off, a one-off, and then I'll come back to give you a little more insight into some of these other things. But the story you hear in Genesis, if you don't know the backstory and the front story, you're kind of, it's kind of confusing because... Abraham is talking about Ishmael and so on and Sarah. Well, of course, Abraham wants a descendant. He wants a male descendant. So what he does is he takes a slave woman and has a child by her. And his name is Ishmael. Okay? But then God blesses him and tells him Sarah, his wife. And in fact, we hear, hear Sarah in the tent chuckling at one point that she in her, in her late, late years is actually going to birth a child. Now... Of course, we hear in this piece where, as for Ishmael, this is, G, this is God talking, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of 12 chieftains, and I will make of him a great nation. What's that all about? Well, the descendants of Ishmael are the Muslim people. And so here we have the Jewish people, we then have the Christians, Christ, and we have the Muslim people, all out of this same, you know, descendant of Abraham. And this is important, my brothers and sisters, because we are all brothers and sisters, and we, we fight like brothers and sisters. You would think that everybody that was descendant of the same lineage would somehow be able to come together, but we don't seem to be able to do that. But important piece of little... Bible, Bible study here, realizing that this is that moment when the dissension starts when, and I don't, mean, I don't mean dissent in terms of anarchy, but I mean dissent in terms of them coming, who goes where. So Christianity, which is Abraham, Jews to Christ, Abraham, Jews, Abraham, Ishmael, Sarah, Muslims. We're all brothers, we're all cousins, and we seem to fight like brothers as well. But the leper today. Have you ever wondered what happens when the leper actually shows themselves to the priest? You know, we hear that, go show yourself to the priest. Well, when then what happens? You know, there, there's kind of a storyline here that's hanging. Well, actually, if you go to the book of Leviticus, Leviticus is all the rule book. Somebody once told me the best way to make a dry martini is to pour the gin in a glass and pour and and, and move the book of Leviticus over it because Leviticus is all rules. But Leviticus gives us the details of what happens when you go to the priest. First, the priest examines the leper. We kind of got that. Following a detailed description outlined in Scripture. So if you want to go read that, you can. To determine if the leprosy was actually gone. If the leprosy was cured, the priest would perform a ritual using, are you ready, two birds, cedar wood, red yarn, and hyssop. We've heard hyssop before. The hyssop branch that the, remember right, when the Israelites are supposed to put the blood of the lamb on their door lentils, they use a hyssop branch. What is the sponge with the sour wine that's given to Jesus, given to him with? A hyssop branch. This seems to be a key thing going on here, but this is one of the items in the idea of the, of the, the cure, or determining the cure of leprosy. The bird became a sacrifice, and the former leper would sprinkle, be sprinkled with the blood of that, that bird. 
When, um, then, they would then wash their clothing. They would shave off all of their bodily hair. They would then bathe in water and then remain in quarantine for seven days. A week later, the same shaving and bathing was repeated. On the eighth day, the leper would present sacrificial lambs and offerings of grain and oil to the priest who would then offer them to God, and he would mark the leper with that sacrificial blood. Key little point there, healing, sacrificial blood. Does this sound familiar? Then they, would make, then they then made atonement for their sins and were integrated back into the community. Again, this sounds kind of barbaric, kind of you know, old worldish and so on. And it, it seems really arduous, but how does a two week quarantine in the comfort of your home sound in comparison? You know, because of scientific modern understanding, these bloody ancient rituals are no longer necessary because we have, you know, we can now have uh, inoculations and so on to cure these things. But the ancient fears of leprosy have mostly been vanquished. But our other fears remain, don't they? Abraham feared not having someone to carry on his name. We know people like that, don't we? He just could not believe that God would provide, would not provide a child for him and Sarah. Despite God's assurances, he just seemed to doubt. Don't we all doubt God sometimes? We know God kept that promise. What do you still fear? Is it the pandemic? Is it the results of the pandemic? Is it jobs? Is it family? What is it that you fear? And when in your life, and remember this importantly, when in your life has God kept his promise? Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our young people who are preparing for marriage with the support of a Christian community. May they grow in love with generosity, faithfulness, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer and for our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, for we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Happy Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. We'll see you back here, end of the week. Have a nice weekend. God bless.